In part one of this short series, I'm going to go through the basics of a cover letter, break down the simple elements, and then further into part two and three, you can see what a cover letter really looks like. Okay, so to give an introduction to a cover letter, you need to make sure that you're expanding on your CV. All too often I see cover letters which really just regurgitate the same stuff from the CV. Now, cover letters probably one of the trickiest things you'll do during the process of an application. And it's really important that you understand the process, what you have to do here. What you have to do is sell yourself. Again, another mistake I see, and it's certainly something I've done over the years and tried to improve on, selling yourself. You need to persuade the employer to employ you and not the other people that are going for the job. So the way you stand out is your sales tactics. You also need to put that into the right structure. Now, there's no one way of doing a cover letter. Each cover letter can be a little bit different depending on the job. But typically, as an undergraduate student, if you're putting your cover letter together, the sorts of things you're putting in are an introduction, speak about your educational background, your work experience, and also what you plan to do in the future. So start off with introduction, what you want to do is get the basics right at the start, give some context. So you'll say your name, say the name of the job. So my name is Chris and I'm applying for the vacant position of whatever it is. You're going to finish off this short paragraph by saying, well, why should you employ me? What makes me stand out is, and you give three or four reasons based on your education or your work experience, whatever it is. It's a very quick breakdown before you get into the real uh, meaty part of the cover letter. Normally, if I was a student, I'd start off with education. Again, depends on the job, so the structure can vary, but I'd start off education. So I'd start off with the modules. I've done these relevant modules. This relates to the job because of this reason. If it's a very hands-on job, I'd focus on practical classes as well. So for example, if you're going for a personal training job, I'd speak about the practical classes as well, particularly if you haven't got experience yet in a gym, if you're a first, second year student going for your first job. Also speak about your qualifications. Now that's in your CV, but speak about what the qualification was, what it consisted of, what you learned, and really importantly, what this qualification brings to the job. You then got your work experience. Now, this is probably the biggest part of it, so you need to make sure you nail this bit. You need to discuss the relevant roles. You need to be careful here not to just copy the CV. Again, I see a lot of people do it, so you need to be really cautious about that. The angle you approach really is what did you learn in this job? You're not going to see it on your CV. It's more just kind of what you did. You're going to say here, what did you learn? And again, really importantly, what do you offer to this job? So what have you done in previous jobs? No matter what that job is, what are the parts of that that you can bring and make yourself a strong candidate for this job you're applying for? When it comes to future plans, you don't want your letter to have too much of this. You want to focus more on the present, what you can offer, but there's certain things you can put in. So for example, qualifications and courses, if the advert has a certain qualification or a course you haven't done yet, I would put that in the cover letter and say, I plan to do this in the next few months. Don't be apologetic about it because that's underselling yourself, but just be very clear. Just say in three months time, I plan to do this or that, whatever it is. Employers will also want to know as a student, are you there for the long haul or the, the short term? Each job is different, has a different expectation. Um, if you're coming towards the end of your degree and you're going for a job that is more long term, say that. Don't come across as someone that's quite... Uh, laid back and you be there for a few months and you're just using it as a stepping stone to go somewhere else be really passionate and show i'm here for the long haul i want to do this this and this in this job and develop and be a strong part of your team for a long period of time so coming towards the end of this video now i'm just going to go through some of the key points of a cover letter and what you should and shouldn't do you need to speak about what you can do for the company i've already touched on this a couple of times i can't stress it enough you need to make sure you're doing that and you're not just doing it about yourself. I appreciate the argument is what well, this letter is about me and who I am, what I've done. It is, but you need to include the company's name really frequently. So you'll say, these are my qualities. But secondly, these qualities relate to your company to make you better for this reason. You also need to show passion for the role and the company itself. So do your homework, look into the company, what are they good at? Chuck a couple of compliments in the letter about the company, things like that. And what you don't want to do is send the same template to everyone. Sometimes a student will send me a cover letter and they'll say, oh, do you mind having a quick look at that? And it's very generic. It's just a template. 
you can't be sending that to a company. They'll smell the template a mile off. It has to be very personalized to that job and that company. It takes time, but it's worth it once you get that job. Okay, so that's the end of the video. There's three parts to this. So part two, I'm gonna go through planning a cover letter. So I've picked out a job at Motherwell Football Club. Even if you don't like football or don't plan to work in that field, it's worth watching because it breaks down the simple elements of how you plan a letter regardless of the job. And part three, I'm gonna show you how to actually put the letter together. I'm gonna to do a screen share and just show you how a cover letter looks when it's finalized. Okay, so if you click on the top right now, you can see part two. Go on that and you can learn a little bit more about how to plan a cover letter. Okay, thanks for listening and I'll see you in part two.